Earth. The only home we've ever known. A precious blue marble in the void filled with civilization enabling yet finite resources. One day, these resources will run out. What do we do then? Well, my favorite sci-fi horror game has an answer. We start cracking planets. Yes, we go to other celestial bodies and pick them apart piece by piece until an entire world is consumed. But is planet cracking for precious resources enabling our expansion into the cosmos really where we're headed? Or should we look somewhere else? First, was that a hand? Ew. Cool. Now, 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 Andrew. Where's my son? Now, now. Where's my boy? The facility. The inciting incident of Dead Space is when engineer Isaac Clarke and his team are on their way to service the USG Ishimura. Once they get there, things go a little, um, stabby stabby, but for our purposes today, the USG Ishimura is a marvel of engineering. 1.6 kilometers of massive machinery made to haul literally hundreds of trillions of kilograms up from gravity wells of planets for processing. This processing can take many years, but eventually an entire planet is consumed. This process of planet cracking makes in-game corporations super space rich and the single largest providers of precious materials in the known universe. Now, we don't have year 2500 technology like the Ishimura yet, but humans do have their sights set on something very similar, asteroid cracking. When the solar system first formed, millions of smaller rocky collections that wouldn't go on to form planets simply stayed cosmic rubble, loosely held together by very weak gravities, most of them in orbit between Mars and Jupiter, in a band called the Main Belt. What each asteroid is made of can vary widely, from precious metals like gold, silver, and platinum, to organics, to water ice. Our understanding right now is that there are at least 10 thousand asteroids the size of sports stadiums filled with precious resources on orbits that swing close to Earth. Now at this point you may be asking Now at this point you may be asking yourself If we had the technology, why crack asteroids and not planets? Well, that's because when a rocky body gets massive enough to become a planet, the gravitational forces are so large that they start to overcome the material strengths of that body, and those materials start to flow like fluids. And you know if you've ever mixed oil, water, other fluids that they arrange themselves according to density, with the denser stuff going towards the bottom. So when a planet forms, its precious metals, for example, start to flow down towards the core of the planet. Asteroids are much smaller, with much weaker gravities, and they don't do this. They remain undifferentiated, meaning that any precious materials they have are equally distributed throughout the body including right at the crust. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Earth thick, and it's extremely hard to get down at precious materials when you're drilling more than a kilometer or two. For asteroids, you don't have to do this. You can extract minerals right at the surface. It would be much, much easier than a planet. And you would want to mine asteroids because unlimited space dollars. Was that another hand? I don't think he has many more of those. Neil deGrasse Tyson, among others, has argued that the world's first trillionaire will likely be an asteroid mining mogul. Why? Well, even though asteroids are much smaller than any planet, they can be ludicrously rich in their composition. For an example, we've already identified enough asteroids in the main belt to equal 10 million times all the iron on Earth. You could build iron stuff forever. We've already estimated that a single asteroid the same length as the Ishimura could be worth an entire year of GDP for the United States. This one asteroid, 16 Psyche, has been estimated to have so much darn gold in it that the worth of all that gold if brought back could give everyone on the planet $93 billion. And this is, these are small asteroids and there's millions of them. It is not an exaggeration to say that any successful asteroid mining civilization could become post-scarcity. No want. You can build anything at no cost 
forever for everyone. So how do we hit this utopian point, you ask? Well, that's the hard part. Containment breach on deck four. Containment breach on deck four. That's probably nothing. I'm just gonna need one sec to go deal with something. I gotta go deal with something, cause no one else. I'll be right back, don't worry about it. Y'all gonna make me put my hair up for this now? Where did you come from? Where's your face? Oh, why do you have so many arms? Oh. You know, unlike planet cracking in dead space, asteroid mining is not a solved thing. So you find some asteroid somewhere worth a billion trillion cosmos coins, then what? Well, you have a couple options. And I'm just gonna lay here for a second while I explain them. Dismembering your friends is hard. Once you're at an asteroid, you have four mining options. The first is called in-space manufacturing, where an operation harvests materials from an asteroid, processes them, and then manufactures products right there in space. The other options are simplifications of the first. You could also process materials on site and bring them to Earth, take raw materials back to Earth for processing, or bring the asteroid to an orbit where a space station or lunar colony can process it. In any case, you attach your ship to an asteroid and start drilling for precious materials, which again would be far easier and more productive than the same drilling is on Earth. But the technology to do zero-g drilling and refining and do it all safely doesn't exist yet, even though the reason to do all of this does. If I'm making any of this sound easy, it's not. We may have something like an Ishimura in 500 years, but the best that we've done so far are two Japanese Hayabusa missions, probes that successfully identified, surveyed, landed on, and mined an asteroid and they brought back with them all the way to Earth an incredible haul of less than the weight of a paperclip. Clearly, mining ugh, space at scale is gonna bring with it a lot of challenges. Whew. Cutting legs off is hard. Jeez. Whew. That was rough. Before we ever crack an asteroid and unleash unspeakable whores, I mean space bucks, on humanity, we have to make a number of advancements across a number of different scientific fields. First, we have to get better at simply identifying the asteroids that are very mineral rich and are worth the time and the fuel to go and mine. Second, we have to develop the technology that can mine and refine in zero G. And thirdly, we need the propulsion systems that can actually get us to an asteroid across the system and back and have it be economically viable. For example, a asteroid across the system that has a hundred billion tons of iron may not be worth it, but a hundred billion tons of platinum? That might be worth it. And before the Earth's resources really do run out and we're forced to asteroid mine, the startup cost for something like this is almost prohibitive. No one wants to invest in it right now because it's been estimated to be hundreds of billions of dollars with many years long rates of return. For example, NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission, which is gonna return just a few hundred grams of an asteroid to Earth, is gonna take over seven years and cost a billion dollars. All of this, leads us back to planet Deck cracking, four. I swear, Kevin. If I have Deck to kill four. you a third time, my dude, you better not get any blood on me. Get back, get back, I'll, I'll, I'll dismember you. Oh. While it's true that if you could dismantle the entire mantle of a planet and more, you would get an insane amount of resources, it's arguably much easier to go around and mine out the much more numerous and much more comparatively mineral-rich asteroids that tumble about the main belt of our solar system. And in reference to the USG Ishimura specifically, you probably don't want the system that it uses. Hauling up hundreds of trillions of kilograms from a gravity well will take so much fuel, making the economy maybe not work for asteroid mining. Think of how hard it is just to get to moon with a couple of people. And you would probably wanna just land your ship 
on the surface of the body and do all the mining and processing there instead of staying in a hovering type of orbit, which again would use more fuel. But credit to Dead Space, where Dead Space is due credit. Dead Space. Credit. While planet cracking is what everyone, including myself, remembers from Dead Space, the lore of the Ishimura is more detailed and reads thusly, quote, Built in 2446, the Ishimura was hailed as the savior of Earth and the colonies, as a symbol of mankind's innovation. The Ishimura was the first ship capable of scan and catch techniques for harvesting mineral-rich asteroids by using huge gravity tethers. The ship had the ability to lock onto asteroids and pull them into her massive collection bays for smelting. Bam! Right there, the best sci-fi horror game gets near future science right, and it just bends the rules only a little bit, as all great science fiction does. But wait, no, get back, back I say, back. That's entirely too many arms and not enough jaw. Where, where's your face? What's wrong with your face? <sighs> if we could mine asteroids and maybe planets one day, what would we do with all the resources? Well, unlimited space bucks may be what galvanizes our civilization to become truly spacefaring and interplanetary. Think about it. Using unlimited space resources from asteroids to build space stations to do science all across the solar system, build colonies on Mars with unlimited metal and other shielding materials. We could enable tourism and true interplanetary trade by building refueling stations that are topped up by the oxygen and hydrogen separated from copious asteroid water ice. The economy of all this stuff isn't quite figured out yet because it hasn't happened, but maybe in a situation as dire as dead space, the old saying is true. If you want to make a space omelet, you gotta crack a few planets. Ugh, how long were you holding on to that one? I've been through a lot today. Until next time. I don't want to hear nothing. Now exiting the facility. Don't worry, it wasn't even my blood. Thank you so much to today's sponsor, EA and Dead Space, and thank you, members of the facility, for your direct and substantial support in the creation of today's video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat not spattered in blood, if you want episodes early, behind the scenes, photos, videos, bloopers, once a month, members only live streams with yours truly, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill to join the facility to die. And if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria here in every single episode. Look at you. And there's so many of you that I'm looking at. How could I even pass this up? One thing that I liked about Dead Space and its lore is that in the lore of the Ishimura, they actually have a passage there where the company is talking about, now I know you hear a lot of propaganda that destroying a planet throws other planets out of whack. And it's interesting for that thought experiment, right? What would happen if you deleted a planet out of our solar system? Say you removed Earth or Mars or even Jupiter with a lot more mass. Well, it turns out that even Jupiter that is so massive and gassy it, it has so little mass compared to the sun, like less than a hundredth of one percent of the mass of the sun or something like that, that removing an entire planet wouldn't distort the other planet's orbits in relation to how the sun's gravity is making them orbit almost at all. So am I a PR person for the corporation that cracks planets? Maybe. Thanks for watching. It was fake blood. Don't demonetize me.